I'm going to show you how to have a great day's fishing on three slices of bread. Right, so we've come here today to do some bread dobbing. Now, you're probably wondering what is bread dobbing or dobbing bread as some people refer it to. Now, all it is, it's basically like fishing, bombing bread, but on the pole. So all we're doing is we're locating the fish that don't really want to feed and we're just putting a piece of bread in front of them and they sort of snatch at it and they sort of eat on instinct. So and fish you don't really want to eat your maggots, your pellets, your sweet corns, just sort of swimming around, don't really want to eat, but they'll eat the bread. Now, location is the biggest thing with this method. So all you've got to do is find a good location of carp or F1s. And basically you just vary your depths and just try and find what layer them fish want to sit in and catch them. Now this method, it comes into its own and then fish don't really want to eat anything from sort of end of October all the way through to March, April, that sort of time, depending on the weather. It normally works best when it's cold, like I say, when the fish don't want to actually eat. As the water temperature reaches a stage where then fish don't really want to eat so much. So this is where the bread really comes into its own. There's not much bait there, so they see the bread and they'll actually want to, they just want to eat the whole thing because it's more like an instinct method. And I think it almost annoys them onto the hook, if you like. It's an absolute fantastic method. I'm going to show you how exactly how to do it. So when dobbing, the most important thing is locating the fish. Now, an obvious place to sort of dob would be to sort of reed, a tree, that sort of thing, a feature in your peg, but you actually can do it in open water. The fish actually will congregate in open water as well and sit in little shoals. And this is where you've got to find where the fish are. They don't always want to be tight in cover. They'll sometimes feel safe in sort of open water and deeper water. And that's where the plummet is going to be your best friend. Now, what we actually do to find the fish is we sort of get this sort of depth of the water in front of you. And what we do is we sort of drag the plummet slowly. And the best way to describe it is when you find a pod of fish, it's almost like there's a, a branch or lily bed on the bottom. You'll sort of drag it across and it'll be knocking and it's sort of like jigging into your line. And that's actually a pocket of fish. What you want to do is in, the, in that case is you want to sort of come away from that, leave the fish, have a, a rough idea what the depth is and probably start off around a foot off bottom in open water. Now, you can actually have some really good days doing this in open water, and it's just literally because the fish want to be there. You you, it's not necessarily you wanting to fish where you think's the best, it's where the fish want to be. So using the plummet, dragging it around, finding the fish can be absolute winning tactic. But in some pegs, you do have great features with some great depth as well. So don't rule them out. Always have a dob to them and it can be a really good method where other methods fail on the day. So bread choice is actually really important. Now you probably think, well, any sort of slice of bread will do, but it's actually really important what bread you use. Now the orange Warburton's toasted bread is the best dobbing, uh, bread for dobbing by our country mile. Reason being, it's nice and durable, so it's quite almost doughy bread. So it stays on your hook well, and it also swells up to a nice size. If you use a bread, it's sort of too dry. What happens is it, it crumbles off your hook, it washes off and it, it actually swells too big. It's just no good. So orange war button is the best sort of bread to go for. Now storing it as well is really important because obviously if I got my slices of bread out, I left them on my tray like that, they're gonna dry out. So actually how you store the bread is really important. Best way is just get a sandwich bag and just take one slice at a time and put it in your, in your tub. And all I do is I just put my bread in my bag like that, I wrap it up, leave it on my side tray like that and it's going to keep airtight so the consistency of the bread's not going to change. When it comes to your sort of, your size of bread punch, Keep it quite simple for this method. I tend to go for a six or an eight mil. Now, six mil is obviously good for sort of smaller fish, F1, smaller cart, that type of thing. But my favorite is the eight mil. It just offers, it's a bit more visual. It just seems a better punch for me. But what I will do is if I'm missing bites or anything like that, I just try the six mil, simple as that. So two, two choices of uh, bread sizes. That's how I store my bread, dead easy. So this is the rig I actually like to use for dobbing. Now, starting off with the elastic, I've got an orange zip. Now, I put this actually in a long kit today, which is absolutely lovely. Now, it's quite a few carp in the venue I'm fishing today. It's nice for a combination of F1s and carp. It's beautiful and soft, so when you hook these fish, it just sort of allows them to glide out your peg. The worst thing you can do is use elastic, it's too heavy, because if you hook these fish in the docile, they'll come to the top, splash around, and it's going to spook the others. So a soft elastic is so important. The orange zip's absolutely lovely for that. Coming on to my main line, I've just got an 016 main line. Nice and durable. It means I've got to tie less rigs in the winter, which is absolutely fantastic because I don't like tying rigs. And it also gives me the option of fishing right up to an 016 hook link. So it's a nice durable rig. From pole tip to your sort of float, I've got a decent length of line. I like to keep my pole tip away from the water because it sort of, them fish can get spooked. Obviously if the water's clear as well, they can get really spooked. So by keeping that pole tip off the water, it's going to result in more fish and more bites. But another thing as well, it allows me to vary my depth so I can do anything with my rig. Like in today's case, it's like four foot deep and I'm fishing around three foot. But if I wanted to try an open water, I can do because I've got that length of line. And with this method, you don't tend to miss bites. When it goes under, it's on. Float choice, this is really important. 
if you use a float with a too thin a bristle, it doesn't hold your bread up here. It's not, it's not enough buoyancy in the tip for the bread. So I've actually got, got a 4x10 Cipri. It's got a 1.7 mil bristle, which I really like because winter light can be really bad as we know. And it just shows up really nice and it supports the weight of the bread. It's just a lovely bristle for bread fishing. Now, shotting pattern, this can vary a bit on the situation you face with. In today's case, I've gone for a really slow fall just because it's catching them carp on the drop and they're watching it down. So what I've got is I use number 11s for all me 4x10 floats. So I've just got a bulk of number 11s under the float like that. And then I've got another number 11. Well, I've actually got three number 11s, but basically what I do with my number 11s is I have one six inches away from the hook and then I go in one foot intervals and then until I reach my float. Then obviously if I was fishing a bit shallower than this, I'd have two. So it obviously just depends on the depth you're fishing with. There's a time where I'd string this out and this is basically when this is not working. So if this is not working, don't be scared to change. Just string them out in equal, equal spaces and that'll give you like a, a bit more of a consistent fall and it's, it might sound a bit weird, but some days one works better than the other, so just experiment with that. Now, coming on to my hook link, I've actually got a four inch hook link, and that's to 014, and I've gone for an 18 SLWG hook. Quite a strong hook, because this method, you can hook some really big fish, you know, carp up to double figures even, so I don't want to go too light, and I don't want to fish too light, too much of a light hook, because I want to land these fish when they all come. And it, to be honest with you, I don't think it makes too much difference, because obviously the bread swells up, it covers a lot of your rig anyway, so I don't think you need to fish too light. That's my rig, let's go and catch some fish. Right, so we've explained the bait, the tackle and everything like that. Let's go and catch some fish. So what we're going to do is we're going to obviously start on bread. So punch wise, I'm going for an 8mm punch. Now you can use 6mm, but there's quite a lot of carp in here. I just prefer an 8mm to start. If you start missing bites and everything like that, I'll try 6mm. And location-wise, I've gone so it's about 13 metres to start with at the bank, and as you can see, we're dobbing up a corner today. And what I actually do is I don't go, I mean, obviously, I've got an aerator there, and I think that's going to be my best spot. So what I do is I always start short of it. I never go right up to it. Reason being, if I go straight up to it and then fish back off, I've got nowhere to go. Where if I start on sort of the edge of the shoal and then sort of push them back, I can keep picking them off, and it makes me peg last longer. So always be quite patient when you're dobbing. Now, where I'm fishing, it's approximately, it's around four foot. Obviously, I just have a quick sort of plumb up. I don't spend too much time because I don't want to spook the fish. So it's about four foot and I'm starting at three foot. So it's about a foot off the bottom. Now, if I was getting indications or anything like that, I'd sort of come a bit shallower. Any sort of little wobbles on the float or miss bites, just come shallower, literally four inch intervals because it can be that, just them little changes make the big differences. And like I say, if you're not getting any bites go up go down to sort of anything from six to eight inches off the bottom and just try and find them fish now you see a lot of people when you dob in they don't stick at it they'll sort of start at a certain depth and they'll think oh there's nothing there where it's you've just got to find where the fish are and what they went on the day and as we've been saying as well like shotting patterns and the fall rate everything like that is so important and what i tend to do when i'm dobbing is i'll sort of leave it no longer than a minute in general and then i'll just relay the rig in reason being again is it's all about the fall if you just leave it statically some days it will work but some days it just doesn't they want the bait falling i think it almost irritates them into feeding like they're probably swimming around not really having it don't really want to feed and when that bait just falls by them snatch at it it's almost like an instinct method so i've not had a bite so what i'm going to do is i'm going to lay me rig all the way out the water and i'm just going to lay it again back in again and leave it for around. So what I mean as well by leaving it, when the float settles, when everything's settled, then I'll leave it for 30 seconds to a minute. So what'll happen is you'll see it, the float, the droppers register on the bristle, so it's dot, it dots down like that, and then I'll leave it 30 seconds to a minute. And then if I've had no indications, I'll either relay it or just keep moving it about. Like another thing as well, we're in a corner today, but the water, against the bank into the cover very very shallow so the fish probably won't won't want to be settling there it's sort of like 18 inch deep something like that and then fish tend to be slightly further down that slope and by using the plummet as well you sort of get a you can feel where the fish are and sort of pick them off but again so if i don't get a bite this this cast i'm just going to relay it and i'm going to relay it slightly further to the left because we're on a shelf today and we're just literally trying to pick them off if you like and what I've been explaining that aerate is my hot spot but before I go there I want to pick the shoal off 
So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to lift it out. I'm just going to go probably a foot closer than I was before. And if this doesn't go, I'm just going to go a bit further, so probably another 18 inches further again and just work in little intervals because you can just literally hit a shoal. If you go over them almost, you can spook them shipping back when you hook one, if that makes sense. So that's just settled up. Give that another, like, 30 seconds, something like that. Because like I've been saying as well, you, you get a response quite quick because I think the fish almost follow it and the snatch at it. It's very instinctive for them. And another thing as well, if no bites or indications, just go, just keep shoving your float up, just keep playing with it. Because every day is different at this game, like they'll just sit where they want to sit, even though it, it's sort of four foot deep, you, you could even catch them at two foot deep, like they'll just sit where that warm layer is in the water. Obviously we can't see that, so we've got to try and work out where they are. So I'm going to actually go a bit further now, so I'm going to probably go another 18 inches further. I'm going to flick it out in the bank and we'll try there. Another thing as well, good tip with this as well, is when you catch one, try and find a reference on your pole, so a bit of graphic or whatever, and then always have your far bank marker. So when you hook one, don't just chip back and play it. Try and remember the actual distance you've hooked it and what you're lining up with, because you can get little tight pockets of fish when you're doing this. So just literally sit in one little hole. If you don't remember where you've caught it, like you're just gonna waste your time trying to get back to the same spot. So you just got to keep playing around with it. So we had another little indication there. So that might be a sign to shallow up as well. So there's obviously a few fish there. We've just gone that, you see, only like 18 inches further. And straight away, I've got had some signs. And there we go. That feels like a decent carp. It's got a nice, uh, Orange zip on as well there, it's really nice and soft, but that's what you needed this time of year, because if you use a heavy elastic, the fish almost, they come to the top and splash and you can just ruin it and disturb the other fish. So this that's really good for sort of winter dobbing fishing. And just take your time with them, like I say, it's winter time, you don't know what weight you're going to catch. So in the summer, we'll be pulling, you know, trying to get them out as fast as we can, but in the winter, just take your time. I mean, I'd imagine this would be a carp. So just, just take your time. Every fish counts in the winter. I've got 014 on, so I've got a decent hook link. Like I said, there's no point going too light because you can hook some really big fish at this method. So as you can see, we've obviously got a nice carp on, and that, that's how simple dubbing can be. Literally, get your tackle right, get your depth right, and locate the fish, and it's as simple as that, really. And then you get nice carp like that. So there's another nice carp on the dobbing bread method. Now, as you can see, it's a really effective method. The key is, it's just location. Locating them fish, being busy, moving around spots, trying to find the fish. So, hope you've enjoyed the video. Go and give it a go and you'll catch some more carp.